Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to this sixth Endors follow-up event. Uh, we are very pleased today to have many speakers uh, coming from member states and EU institutions who will be presenting this morning on ELI, on the European Legislation Identifier, with several use cases and implementations. And the event will start with an introduction by John Down. It will then be uh, followed by task force experts presentations and by John de la Huse and Thomas Franca. And with implementations respectively uh, in Luxembourg by John Dan and in Spain by Maria Represa. And finally with um, the use case of the European Parliament presented by Christy Damne and Laura Liudvina Visiute. Uh, I propose yeah, we start in a minute just from the practical side. Um, view, viewing uh, okay this this event will be recorded it's uh, ongoing uh, another thing is that uh, in terms of questions or remarks viewing the tight schedule we are having uh, we will first do the presentations please put all your questions in the chat afterwards and normally if we count uh, towards 11 30 we will have time time for questions and answers and uh, in order to tackle everything every question you might have uh, as a final note, please also, if you're not speaking, because there are different uh, presenters, there will be different sharing of uh, presentations. If you're not speaking, please uh, may I ask you to unmute uh, or mute, mute yourself during the, uh, the presentations. So I, with this, I wish you a very pleasant uh, follow-up event, and I give the floor to, to John Dan, Dan to, to introduce Eli. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Stefan. I guess we all can, you can all see. Uh, the... Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, European legislation identifier, a, uh, uh, I would say a real, a real success story and uh, over, over time. And uh, let me just maybe introduce where, where we started, where we came from, what were actually the challenges. Uh, this is dating back 2010, and a lot of us had the opportunity to either to modernize or change the way they were publishing in the official journals. And um, one idea which came out in 2010 uh, was then how can we easily interconnect this information? Do we always have to do this copy and paste of directives into our system? Would it, wouldn't it be easier to use uh, the semantic web technologies uh, to really interconnect information. And of course, we also have the, the PSI directive, which was very important. Uh, so access to information, reuse of public information is something we, we really thought about it. Uh, and of course, uh, who doesn't want to to open up your data so it can be reused by, um, by, by universities uh, or even for government to be more transparent. So this were actually the, really the big ideas uh, behind it. Uh, and uh, especially, I think, thinking of, of the official journal was mainly also really this interconnecting information. Keep the information where it is produced and just connect to it. So the I, uh, the Eli is, uh, well, it is a Luxembourgish idea, so uh, tend to say sometimes little country, but big ideas. Um, and it was actually invented in in Rome, in the in almost in the forum uh, in in Rome. But it continues afterwards with the work. It uh, it's a, a gathering we all we all the official gazettes come together, which is called European Forum Official Gazettes, and that's where also the countries came on board. Uh, the Office of Publication also as an as as an institution was very quick on board, also believing uh, they actually were using ready the the technologies and believing in the project. So pretty fast we went on to have conclusions at the European Council which was actually done in one year and a half, which is tremendous speed uh, uh, to have a conclusion at the European level. And we also got funded uh, by, the, uh, uh, by ESA at that time and the Digital Europe funding since 2014, which also helped us to 
well, which helped the task force, which was created to help the member force um, uh, to give him some guidance and uh, some help to implement ELI over, over time. Um, let me just say maybe one word or a couple of words. I'd say a couple of words. So I'm, I never stick with one. So uh, collective decision making by the, the task force. It is it worked perfectly. Uh, we are today quite a lot of um, member states and institutions in the task force, and this collaboration over time. I think it's it's a real success. So here again, I also thank all those who, who have been um, since the beginning uh, in the task force. And without them, I think this project would not have would not have worked over time. So again, thanks to all to all of those. So, of course, why Eli? Well, semantic web. You're talking about. Uh, uh, well, persistent identifiers. So why don't have a nice persistent identifier? One which, which you can easily read or which is similar to citations of legislation. So it's also, of course, better access. It's also search engine optimization because we all know people go over search engine to, look, to, to find their legislation. So this helps a lot, but the main subject here is really interoperability. It's really the building the blocks so everybody can talk with each other. And I think this is the, the foundment of, um, uh, of, of Eli, is really this subject where you can all talk more, more or less the same language uh, when you publish legislation. The step-by-step -step implementation, I think we will see it later on, is something which is important because we all have legacy systems. So how can we build on top of them? And I always compare, uh, some of you who have been in my office know I like the Legos. I always compare this with a, a Lego. You can build blocks on top of each other and then implement it over, over time. And of course, nowadays, which is important, it's human and machine readable. And machine readable is something which is very important in the semantic web nowadays. So implementations are throughout Europe. There's a lot of information on the ELI uh, register on your legs. So we are quite a lot who have implemented uh, ELI. Some in different phases, some pillar one, pillar two, pillar three, it really depends on, on how, how you advance over time. And we will see uh, throughout the, the morning some nice presentations where there's some countries even go further down and um, uh, like Spain, for example, where they go further down in the hierarchization of, um, of, uh, of the data which is uh, available. The a legal act has a life. It was once created. It, it's evolved over time, and uh, it might be changed again. So what we did with Eli at the beginning is really concentrate on the publication of the official journal. Meaning, the the law, for example, has been voted, has been signed, and so it really it's being published. Here we have, for example, a. Um, uh, a situation of the Constitution of Luxembourg, where it has been so many times modified, it creates consolidation, it creates uh, modifiers, it creates uh, a lot of information out there. So this has been more or less modelized in ELI. What we saw over time, and this is going to be a further explanation on this uh, in the morning, is what is missing is draft legislation. So everything which has been done before uh, it's being published. So here also we did an extension of the model to really represent the draft legislation. Would it be within governments or would it be within, uh, within a parliament? So this will be presented, especially at the European Parliament, which show what they have, what they have done. Uh, and it's, I think it's very, very interesting for all nationals. A lot of information is available. I'll just show you the slide. Click on the links or you just uh, ulex.eu.eli uh, and you will come to the, to the register. 
So for me, that was a very brief introduction, and uh, I will come back later again for the Luxembourgish implementation. Thank you. So, do you see my slide now? Yes. Okay, great. And I'll just uh, Okay, um, I'm very happy to be with you. Um, I'm Jean de la Housse. I'm one of the experts of the task force. So we have been both working on the standard with Thomas and the task force and also doing a training for a lot of the official journal. Uh, I will talk here just about ELI, sort of the, the, the first part of the, of the standard. Uh, so as John was saying it's uh, both a standard for human to access legislation through the web, uh, to cite legislation in documents, but it's also for machines because uh, the machine access this identifier. They are supposed to find a description of the legislation that they can they can use. Um, the idea of this identifier is that it can be adapted to each uh, specificities of official journal. So you have kind of a template of um, how to identify legislation with a URI. So you have the namespace of the, of the official journal. You can, you, you should say that it's a ELI identifier. You can indicate which jurisdiction you are talking about. Is it at the state level or at the regional level? Who is the agent that is uh, creating legislation for which year, for which month, the type of legislation, the identification of the legislation. And so we will see in the next uh, slide that this template is, uh, has been adapted for by each of the official journal. So I, I, oh, another point is that this identifier is not only for European or national legislation, it can be used at any level of legislation. I give you here a uh, different example of um, ELI identifier. So you have a directive here, and just indicating it's a directive, the year, the number, and the fact that it's published at the OG. You see here a consolidated text in Malta. So you have uh, the same Malta, ELI, the type of legislation, its identification, the chapter in the consolidated text. You see a local regional um, legislation at Catalonian uh, law. So I guess Spain will talk more about it, but you see that it's both Spain, Catalonia in Spain and the identifier in, uh, in Catalonia. And what is interesting is that you have now adoption of the ELI by, uh, by uh, independent authority. It's the case of the French financial authorities which use ELI to, to, do, to identify the, the, the regulation they can uh, publish. So the ELI can be used at any level of the legislation and for any type of legislation. Um, so that's the first, the first idea is really to have an identifier that is stable uh, through the time. Second idea is to propose a data model, uh, in a semantic web it's called ontology, to describe the legislation, describe the legislation itself, but also all the links between legislation. Uh, it's a little bit the same. This uh, data model is uh, can be adapted for each official journal. Some don't use all the data models. Some extend a little bit the data model. <clears throat> and the, the adoption of a shared data model is really the, the base for interoperability between member states and the EU. Just one point, the old standard is not reserved to the member states. It can be used by any country. We have uh, country like Albania who use it, or I think it has been adopted in Brazil also. So it's it's an open standard, international open standard. Just a small example of, me, it's not uh, exhaustive, it's just uh, some metadata that can be used to describe a legislation, the type of document, uh, who passed this legislation. It's an example here from Spain. The date of the document, its, num uh, its number, the title of the legislation, the date of publication. So that's few of the of the property you can use to describe legislation. And second part of the of the metadata are used to describe the links. So you have 
you know, for example, modifies, based on, sides, consolidate. So you have an example here of a Polish legislation uh, that has been modified twice. Huh? You, you, you have the, the modifying acts on the, on the bottom, and this legislation is transposing a European directive. So you have the links to the to the ELI uh, identifier of the European legislation here. Yeah. So we see both here linking inside uh, the inside the member state and linking from member states to the European level. Another, uh, I will now show you the different usage of uh, the standards. So one of the use, and it's probably the, the simple simplest one to implement is to describe when you have a web page in, in official journal web uh, website uh, it's to insert inside the web page metadata describing the legislation so for example here you see the the type of document the date of the document the um, what you see the jurisdiction of the document so the idea is that if a machine access to this web page, it can understand exactly what which legislation is described in this web page. And it also it's open data, so it also can gather this information. The second new usage of the standard is that uh, when an uh, official journal wants to create a new information system, they want to renew what they have. Uh, it provides a data model that can be reused for their new project. Uh, and this, it's kind of a base for their data model because they can enrich it with their uh, the local specificities. Uh, third use of, um, of LE is really interoperability uh, among uh, EU and, and member states. So, one of the one of the usages to to ex when you exchange information about legislation between institutions so it can be between the government and the parliament or with independent authorities with ministry is to have a way to to transfer this information in something that is standard uh, and not to have to to re uh, redefine a new uh, data model each time you do those exchange uh, the second use is between member states and EU, uh, and it's already used. Uh, you have an application now where you can declare the. You have an application where you can declare the adoption of a national legislation, which transposes a uh, EU legislation, and uh, you can just indicate the URI of the of the national legislation. It will gather. The, 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 the metadata describing this legislation in the website of the official journal. Uh, and there is more projects coming now uh, to exchange a message uh, in between Euro European institutions. Uh, future project uh, using based on ELI is to be able to have a search engine uh, able to have a would have a complete view on uh, EU legislation and member state legislation. Uh, so the idea is to gather all those um, legislation description in one central system to be able to have a complete view, uh, both for citizen and uh, and to create new services for business and citizen uh, among this. Uh, this gathering of all the European legislations. Uh, so just uh, to finish, uh, LD standard is really a component of a European legal space, which is a, a project that is uh, ongoing now in the EU and with member states. Thanks. For your time. <clears throat> My next. Hmm. So I will now <clears throat> share the screen and 
um, present you with a walkthrough of the conceptual landscape of ELI plus ELIDL. So good morning, I'm Thomas Frankart. I'm um, technical expert uh, for the ELI task force. Um, and the idea here is to give you a, a, an overview of what is in this ontology that uh, Jean mentioned earlier. So what does ELI and ELIDL allow to describe and allow to express. And Jean has already given a couple of examples and more example of these, the actual usage of this ontology will be given uh, next, including by the uh, European Parliament. Uh, so first of all, if some of you wants to have a closer look of what are the ELI and ELIDL ontologies, here are the links. Uh, the precise thing, the precise pointers, you will find documentation. All of this is pretty heavily documented. It's not only the technical file, but you will find um, Excel files and diagrams describing what I'm going to uh, explain you now. Um, the use case and the, the scope of, of both ELI, uh, of, of of ELI DL uh, in particular is to be able to describe um, the uh, legislative processes of, of bills and, and parliamentary process. So being able to describe the um, web pages of official journal, um, giving the timeline of a bill. Here's an example of the uh, Irish official journal, or here's another example of um, ULEX uh, showing the steps of a um, um, European uh, directive being um, uh, on its way in the uh, legislative uh, workflow here with the showing the steps of the adoption by the Commission and all the description. So that's that's the uh, one of the original focus of uh, the ELIDL, ELI itself being for the description of the uh, legislation already uh, passed, already in force. So ELI complemented with ELIDL is a descriptive uh, framework, but it is not prescriptive. So it means it provides you with the semantic building blocks to describe documents and activities, but it does not impose you how they must be described. And there is no there is no um, uh, fixed rule for saying you must describe your act or your legislative process with this and this and this and that. It provides you with a, a framework or a list of possibilities in which you can choose. So it's descriptive, it's not prescriptive. Um, the overall scope of ELI and ELADL is about documents, on one side and activities on the other side or events or things that happened. Uh, so we say it's an even based model. We describe even, we describe what happens during the legislative process. Um, think about a timeline of activities that happen throughout the process connected to documents. These activities are, will be connected to documents and I'm gonna uh, go a little bit of detail uh, in a minute about this. So, in this conceptual um, landscape, we have documents on one side, the orange part, and activities on the other side. On the other side, the blue part. The document description is done with a model based on the Ferber conceptual model. The Ferber conceptual model tells you that documents, notices, document records can be split into levels, the work level, the expression level being the linguistic variant, the format level being the file format, and if necessary, the physical file. Uh, the bottom line being that this Ferber structure adapts well to multilingual context and multi-format context, which is usually the case where we have the signed PDF, PDF, HTML, or in paper version of, of the law. 
Uh, this further description also can deal with the versioning of document, which is an important aspect in the, um, the legislative process where, where document comes in version. It also deals with the ability to describe the subdivisions of document, that is, uh, the articles basically uh, inside the law, so we can describe an act uh, or, 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 or a text, but also a precise subdivision within. So, which in our map of the landscape um, um, is shown this way, that all documents are described in Ferber with those layer work expression manifestations. The scope of ELI is on legislative acts. The scope of ELI DL is on document creating during the drafting of the legislation. There's a more generic uh, level that is also provided within this ontology to actually describe any document. Uh, so not act and not draft legislation related if you have a more global uh, needs, there is also this generic level provided in the, uh, the conceptual framework. So we have legislation document on one side, this is ELI, laws, decree, directive, and they can, as Jean demonstrated or shown, link together. They can repeat one another, amend one another, correct one another, be based on one another, etc. And we have on the other side, the draft legislation document, the versions, uh, successive version of the draft uh, document, the amendments, uh, the reports, the opinions or the document produced during the uh, legislative process. Now coming to the activities. The activities can be linked to one another because they can consist of other sub-activities. So think about a hierarchy of activities, a tree of smaller chunks of activities. For example, the vote takes place during the meeting, so the vote is a is a smaller is a chunk of the of the meeting activity or the activities can be motivated by other activities which is a causal non-hierarchical relationship so these are the two small arrows at the bottom of the diagram here activities can consist of others and can be motivated by other activities there's a special kind of activity, which is the process itself, or the legislative process itself. The process corresponds to the entire bill or the entire dossier parlementaire in the case of uh, European legislation, from its initiation to its final signature. So the process is a special kind of activity and can be described with more specific metadata. Uh, these activities and these processes are typed with a, this generic type saying there's there's something taking place the activities or there's a process taking place they can be specialized actually into legislative activities and legislative processes which was the original focus of, of ELIDL before the scope was broadened to also be able to describe non-legislative activities which uh, is a need in the uh, parliament uh, processes description because not all activities of Parliament are related to legislative uh, processes. So, this notion of activities and processes can be specialized into legislative activities and legislative processes. An important aspect of this model is how the activities in the document are, are linked. The document can be used as input or output of activities. The activities can be recorded in the document. Think about the, the summary or the recording of a, of, of a meeting. Uh, activities can foresee a change in legislation, in the legislation processes. So we can, we can express in advance that, that a, a, a bill forces a modification in, in an existing law. And the processes groups all the document issued, published within the process so that they form a unified package. So we have a series of link between activities and document. Activities can be based on document, create document, being recorded in the document, foresees a change in the legislation, in a legislation document, or groups all these draft legislation document produced uh, inside the process. Another important aspect of the activities is the description of the participants in the activities, who did what, 
when basically who did what when and with which role so we have a notion of participant in activities who is the rapporteur of the dossier parlementaire who is the uh, who is the committee in which the activity took place or in which institution this activity took place so we can describe the participant within activity with their role participants can be a person or an organization activities in general are described in the past as they have already been uh, as they have already took place however their may be also a need to describe foreseen future activities as they are documented in meeting agendas but they did not took place yet so the model uh, includes the ability to declare uh, foreseen activities uh, we foresee the the, the the conduction of a meeting as it is described in an agenda document and then we can link the actual activity that took place with the foreseen activities as it was foreseen uh, with possible uh, uh, actual uh, uh, modification uh, between what was foreseen in the agenda and what actually took place. So foreseen activities are here in our uh, map and we, we say activities actually executed what was originally foreseen. There's two more specific kind of activities that deserve a specific description. One is the votes, which is an important uh, kind of activities taking place in, in Parliament, and, we, and it deserves specific metadata, specific description, with the recording of the vote decision of each individual uh, member of Parliament. Uh, and of course, the result of the vote, whether the amendment or whether the text uh, was, was adopted or not. And another kind of activity that deserves specific description is the transposition process of an EU directive within a member state. So we have two specific, two focus on specific kind of activities, the votes here and the transposition process here, which have specific metadata attached to them. So, so th this, is the, this is the overall map, conceptual map of ELI plus ELIDL and on which we can uh, uh, see the, the scope of respectively the ELI part on legislation and the ELI DL part more on activities and draft legislation documents. So the ELI contains the definition of the document structure, the agent and the description for legislation document. ELI DL covers activities and draft legislation documents. So the the map can be uh, split into this blue part, which corresponds to ELI here, and the green part, which corresponds to ELI DL, which is basically all the activities, the bottom part of the diagram, plus the, the part on the draft legislation document. ELI can be used uh, independently of ELI DL, so one can choose to, to use only ELI for descri describing legislation document without uh, using idea for the, the legislative process. So my conclusion is that the ELI and ELIDL provides a, an extensible, there's also, that's an, also an important keyword, this framework is extensible, it provides an extensible framework for the semantic interoperability of legislation documents plus uh, activities that occur within the legislative process. Typical use case of this framework are semantic annotations of web pages, pages as Jean gave an example earlier, publishing of data in data sets in the open data portal, or even creating data centric architecture based on this conceptual framework to be able to uh, create a knowledge graph of documents described with the metadata associated to um, activities that, that, that took place and, and base um, an information system on that. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. I think uh, I'm next in line for uh, the use cases. 
uh, to present some use cases. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's me and then Spain and then the, the European Parliament. Yes, correct. That's correct. Okay, great. Okay, now let me just get my presentation ready to share. There we go. And I'm just going to ask the others if they can, um, if they can um, unmute their, their microphones. Okay. You ready yeah, to go? Okay, you can see. Okay, so Luxembourg uh, had the chance of redoing completely their system in uh, 2000. Um, in 2016, 2015, 2016, was a uh, was a uh, going on, was a going live in uh, 2000 January 2017. But before starting, I just wanted to say what Jean and Thomas also said. It's yes, uh, Eli is open to everybody. It doesn't have to be European. It doesn't have to be legislation. It's really open to 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 all kind of information. And as you saw in John's presentation, there is even financial regulations who, who are in France who are using um, who are using ELA also, and creating this um, this European legal space, or I can also call it the the the, the legal. Data graph uh, is, I think, something is which is becoming more and more interesting. Mainly also because uh, legislation uh, would it be because of the European legislation, national legislation, international legislation, treaties, etc., is becoming more and more complex. And I think more and more people are getting lost uh, or not finding the, the correct uh, act which they are they are looking for. <clears throat> um, Maybe just let me just say one single word here, and then I go on to the to the use case of Luxembourg. I just want to say hello uh, to my daughter, actually, who is listening uh, right now, and she is studying law. Uh, and uh, I remember she only was nine years old when Eli was invented. So today she's a full-grown adult studying law. So I hope she's going to be. Uh, using Eli over time also to find your legislation. So, hi there. Luxembourg. Um, we had a very old system. It was basically paper based. The PDFs had, uh, were looking actually like a, like a paper based version. They were produced uh, also before actually the, the, the HTML or Further, further in time, the XML was published. So there was a lot of manual tasks to publish a legislation in Luxembourg. So as the PDF was pr produced before, the HTML or XML or other formats were pr produced afterwards, there were even differences in content in the formats. Um, so the cost was pretty high because everything was externalized. So I can say the figures because they are official, it was around 10 millions. Uh, and you will see how we reduced it over, over time uh, with uh, internal staff. So for me, here we go. For me, the project Casemat, how I called it in Luxembourg, is really the data approach. It's data is essential, it's uh, data centric. So everything is around data, and all the rest is just a window on the different uh, on the on the different uh, data. All the applications are actually windows. But for me, also was important to rethink completely the publishing methods and really start from scratch using fully Eli, and we can see the benefits today of using Eli. Easier to interconnect, easier to add information easier for the citizens to find the legislation. We can add more content to inside the HTML, so even the search engines can, can, can find it. So it's really moving on into the reuse and connect legal information. We decreased the budget by doing internally to 2.5 million. And I think we even less now because 
we use the 2.5 to do a lot more, which you, you will see late, later, later on. So what we used just very briefly, uh, structured data, it's the XML, which generates all the other formats. So since 2017, I can guarantee that the content is the same. We did create a legal ontology, uh, which is called Geolux, uh, which is actually a bit more ex expanded than the, than the Eli uh, ontology, because we have more information. We have controlled vocabularies, and here again, controlled vocabularies is something essential to find correct information. Um, those who are publishing, those who are the experts in legal data know about it, So, but our politicians sometimes, I would say, don't see the benefit of controlled vocabularies. And of course, ELI, URIs, the Ferber model, which I will show maybe um, a different side of, uh, of, of the Ferber model, which can really help you. And of course, I just mentioned it's schema.org legislation, which is an extension of ELI to schema.org. Uh, so search engines can qualify, can better understand uh, what actually they are, they, are, they are indexing. So here also, great impact uh, for the users for finding their legislation. This is just a small par a small par um, uh, diagram. I always show it just to show off. Um, it's really only uh, a little part of uh, the ontology which we have created with uh, Thomas and, and Jean, especially Jean, who's been working on this for, for, for a number of years with us. So it is important to have this. Once you have it, it's becoming a lot easier to publish your legislation and especially to publish all those links and RDF information you want to, to share with the, with the world. Identifiers, so we decided in Luxembourg to use the identifier ELI, how people citate, how do their citations. So a citation is done by type and date of signature and then uh, a unique number in the memorial. So you can see Loi, it's from the 14th of January, 14th of February 2018, and it was published in the series A in the number 139. So those are really easier for people, for the public to see and to, to, to understand actually what they are seeing above in the, in the navigator. So it's really quite easy for them. Just maybe the Ferber model, I think one interesting part is also how you can easily redirect um, the people to what actually they need. An example here is a, um, a, 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 a loi du 20, du 14 mars 2017. Uh, if I only have, for example, the manifestations, meaning the HTML or something like that, and I, it was amended afterwards, it was changed afterwards, I can actually redirect people over time to what actually they need, and which is a consolidated version. 95% of, of, the, of the people outside want to know what they have to respect at a given time. They don't care about all the changes, they just want to know what, what today I need to do. And so this also can be a benefit of using the firm model. You can do redirect uh, to actually whatever you want. And from there on, if they are a lawyer, for example, you can go back into time with a timeline, which uh, Jean has shown, um, which uh, Thomas has shown also uh, before. So I think that's one important step for, um, uh, to show what's actually, um, you have different views actually on the, on the data. So I said adding more information, um, so we, we started off with only Eli, then we added schema.org over time. Uh, we add all the relations, and this, of course, is hidden into RDFA information within the HTML. So search engines or other, um, other um, uh, systems can actually re easily read and understand the information, or uh, the, the new data portal, the legal data portal could also fetch all the information and understand what, what actually is going on. 
So here again, it's also the on the top you have the the site for the um, for for the users for the public, and then of also of course you always have the the data approach, meaning also for the applications or for those who are expert in SparkQL can do a query on the data. Very briefly, I won't go into detail. It's really the data approach. So data is really central. It's in the middle. And all the other applications will be Legi Pour for draft legislation. Legi Europe is for transmission of directives for the, the following up. Uh, it's really only a window on partial data, which is in, in our big Casimat system. The approach, I think, is uh, has been proven now over time that it was the good approach, and um, uh, and I think I'm very proud to also mention here that Switzerland has acquired uh, Casamat, and since January 2001, the FedLex uh, is publishing with the Luxembourg system. Italy also acquired our system and we will, will be replacing theirs in 2023-2024. So just another uh, mention that uh, we also trying to have more information in Legilux and some are still missing. We have old legislation which is not in force, uh, but which is not available on our site. It's only available in National Archives or the National Library. So what we also did here is, and I thank them for the help. I think without them, I couldn't have done it with the National Library. It's really scanning and doing the XMLization, how I, I called it, from all the acts from 1814 to 1945. So here also, historically, it's going to be, I think, something very, very interesting. I think I will finish here just to say, um, we did mention at the beginning, it's a step-by-step -step implementation you can do it. And I think it's this step-by-step, -step which really facilitates a lot the, 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 the implementation with, within the countries. If you're ready, you do pillar one. If you wanna go move on, you can do the other pillars over time. I think that's one of the essential um, goals of Eli. Do it step-by-step, -step. do it easy, and uh, you will you will you will succeed. Thank you. I think I will pass on. Uh, I'm just looking. We we'll look afterwards in the uh, in 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 the question. I think there's time for questions afterwards. So I will pass on to Spain uh, to Maria, which is also a very interesting use case because they went really further on because of their complicated system they have in Spain. Thank you, John. Good morning, everyone. After this detailed presentation of John about a national implementation, I'm going to go, as our partner said, one step further by telling you how we have uh, taken the implementation to the regional and local level. But let's take it one step at a time. I'm going to show you our starting point. Sorry, I'm not sorry, my screen uh, yes a second. excuse me it's already yeah okay yeah thank you <laughs> uh yeah I, as i told you i'm going to show you our starting point this is spain sorry this is spain there are 17 regions or autonomous communities as we call them all of them with the right to autonomy and self-government. So each autonomous community has a parliament and a government of its own and legislative and regulatory powers. It is a really decentralized country with a multi-level governa governance, quite similar to a federal state. Even we have a multilingual context. Although Spanish is the official language, the Constitution recognized four other languages as a official in bilingual communities, Basque, Catalonian, Galician, and Valencian. What does all this imply? It implies that there are multiple official gazettes managed independently, 
Moreover, there are multiple information systems with different technological developments and metadata and different dissemination services. Everything very helpful and widely used, but with no links among them. And despite all this, state and regional acts and regulation are deeply related and interconnected, so the users will need to access all the Spanish legislation, both state and autonomic, like a meaningful network. This global perspective is a key issue to improve the right to access to the law for everybody, judges, legal practitioners, companies, citizens, and so on. So, yeah, as you guessed, we had a problem, probably like many of you, a few years ago, writing this gap seemed quite impossible. It looked we were going to be apart forever. Then ELI showed up. It was it was love at first sight, and like all good love, it made us grow and face new challenges. ELI was designed precisely to interconnect very different legal information system at the European level. So it could work perfectly at the national scale too. Moreover, ELI is flexible. ELI is gradual. It doesn't need the running system to be changed. And ELI has an European health network and previous experiences of implementation to learn from. So we got down to work. It was precisely this versatile nature of the ELI that forced us to make some technical decisions. Decisions that, given our diversity, we didn't want to be taken unilaterally. We want this diversity to be represented and at the same time reach some homogeneity that facilitate the interoperability. Therefore, we decided to take these decisions in collaboration with the different territorial levels. To this effect, a working group coordinated by the official state gazette was created, in which there were representatives from all the autonomous communities with a multidisciplinary approach, composed of lawyers, information documentalists, and IT specialists. For this part, we, this part we found inspiration in ELI too. This collaboration and coordination from the diversity has been the key factor for the success of the project. It has allowed us to consider many aspects that could otherwise have been overlooked. A part of design a jointly uh, uh, ELI solution that could fit all the official cassettes and legal information systems, the purposes of the working group were to analyze together the existing situations and requirements and to help and assist mutually during the implementation phase. The set of all these technical decisions has resulted in our instruction and manual, as we call it, for implementers and reusers. It's a common technical document that everybody could follow. This document prepared by the working group was formally adopted by the National Commission for E-Government as a technical specification. There were a first edition in 2018 for a state and autonomic legislation and a second one this very same year that includes the local regulations. I'm not going to present the details of the specification. I'm just going to highlight the key points. The first of this has been to establish a single URI template for all legislation, regardless of the territorial level, so state, autonomic, or local, in order to guarantee mutual interoperability. As Jean refers before, the ELI provides the possibility to choose between several URI components. By the Spanish use case, we have chosen all those necessary to identify any type of legislation according to the common elements of all of them. This is the ELI URI template that you will be able to find in any Spanish piece of legislation that has ELI assigned assign to it.
I think Maria, we lost you. Yeah, here we. You're back. You're back. Yeah, I'm oh. uh, I was low hard way. <laughs> I have uh, oh, have you listened about the ELI jurisdiction component? Maybe 30 seconds we lost you. Okay. Uh, okay, it's not too much. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, the second highlight of the specification. And I like that uh, John refers to the legal because he, I had this uh, picture for this uh, slide. Uh, it's is, is the point that Eli uh, ontology offers us a large number of properties. Of these, we have determined which were for us the minimum set that each act should carry when pillar two is to be implemented. The common set of metadata that has been agreed are the metadata needed to build the URI, the mandatory metadata according to the ELI uh, ontology, this metadata uh, with the basic information about publication, and the metadata that promotes interoperability, linking the different legal resources defined in our model. Obviously, each entity is free to apply the other ELI metadata according to its needs and situations to improve systems. The third aspect to highlight in the technical specification is the definition of control vocabularies. These tables unify the content that some metadata can take. Moreover, it has been taken into account a rich multilingualism and ISO standards. The tables have been developed for jurisdiction, range or type document, language and versions. All this work can be consulted in the website elidata.es. We have developed it as a national ELI registry and it is available in English, so I invite you to visit. On this page, you can find general information about the ELI for uh, ELI project for citizens, and we share all technical information for implementers and reusers. If you want to delve into the technical specific specification, you can find here the full text. And here are the conceptual model for some special cases. On this other side, you can consult the metadata that we have set as a minimum with uh, their definitions and requirements. And in this other, you have the possibility to download our national authority tables in XML and RDF scores format. Sometimes we have a unique authority table like this, but other times we have distinguished and a specific one for local regulation as with this for jurisdiction. Finally, at the bottom of the website, the implementation carried out by each territorial level can be consulted. So let's go back to the presentation. So we define the problem and design a solution. That was, that was time to implement. Each autonomous community is implementing this solution according to with their situations and means, although the commitment is to implement it as, as soon as possible. Currently, the state and nine autonomous communities have assigned ELI to their rules. In addition, apart from the state, seven of them have taken the step of developing pillar two and three as for local regulations uh, well in spain there are more than eight thousand municipalities characterized by the wide variety in terms of size economic activity and geographic location so the purpose of the specification is just to offer an implementation model model and this way, those entities that want to apply ELI can do it in a harmonized and coordinated way with the state and autonomous communities. 
result. As a result, we have already a fertile ground for interoper interoperability, interconnection, and reuse, with the possibility of linking the publication made by different official journals of the same legal resource linking initial and consolidated versions when they are available in different information systems, developing future services that can give access to the legislation issued by different territorial levels and with the potentiality of opening bigger possibilities for reusers and meta search engines. All of this just for the purpose of improving citizens' right, right to access to legislation. Let me show you some examples of our implementation. Here is the state implementation run by the official state cassette. Here you can see the permanent link ELI and through the XML or the source code, you appreciate the metadata set. We are assigning to this property is another publication of that that take us to the same resource but published by other official gazette. We can also just change the domain in the URI and we will find the same act identified with the same URI. As you can see, the potential of the alignment among the different legal information system is huge in terms of referencing, linking, search, and reusing. So as you can see, we have jumped to the website of the Murcia Official Gazette, and here we can see the implementation carried out by this autonomous community in the Mediterranean coast. And embedded in the HTML, we will find the metadata based on the same authority tables. But the best of their implementation is that they have also assigned ELI to all the relation of its 52 local entities. We can use this map to access all local decisions. Another example is Valencia, Castilla Leon, or Castilla La Mancha, land of Don Quixote, that let's, let us navigate through the different components of the, U, the URI until we find the legal resource with their metadata. But I don't want to forget Catalonia, Basque Country, Valar Island, Extremadura, and so on. And I could like to make a special reference to the local implementation that has been launched the last month by Zaragoza, a city quite focused on open data. We hope the city of Madrid will implement ELI2 by the end of this year. And that the example of these two big cities can make more chances to join the project. I think we have already achieved a lot and although the pandemic has delayed our plans, we are moving forward again. So we will continue working on ELI until full implementation by the 17 autonomous communities is ready and we will keep giving support to any local entity that plans to implement too. We have learned many things during these years coordinating the project, and every new implementation is a new lesson. Even with a unique technical specification, the implementation can be different and even correct. There are many ways to do the same thing, and that opens our minds every day. There are challenges, of course, but ELI create also new opportunities to, to cooperate in other matters, from thesaurus to data protection or whatever. So to finish, I would like to emphasize that ELI interconnect on only the technical side, but also the conceptual and personal level. 
bringing the different actors involved in the management of legal information closer together. So thank you very much for your attention. And now I give the floor to the team of European Parliament. Hello, everyone. I think Christy will share the slides. Just give us a minute. Yes, okay. Okay. So, my name is Laura, and together with Christy, we will present you today why and how LEDL was implemented by the European Parliament. Uh, let's, uh, next, please. Let's have a quick look on the overview of our uh, presentation. I'm sorry, I think you have to go back. Yes, it's a little bit slow. Uh, so, as we haven't started from zero, I will give you a little bit of background. Then I will explain why and what ambitions were our key drivers, uh, what was our solution, and then Christy will present you our uh, use cases, uh, LEDL use cases. Uh, as any other major institution, the European Parliament produces a significant amount of data. And often data is scattered throughout different data sources, uh, not only with different technologies, but also metadata uh, specific to each application. Uh, consequently, it leads uh, to useless duplication and compatibility and high cost of uh, maintenance of the data. For that purpose, we implemented so-called knowledge management services that retrieves data from more than 20 different production systems of the European Parliament, that aggregates, harmonizes, uh, enriches, and stores it in a single repository. And finally, so that our internal reusers could uh, retrieve it in a more efficient way, data is structured in a machine readable and non proprietary uh, format such as uh, JSON. The project had a great success in terms of uh, a technical interoperability. Our services grew from one to more than 20 users uh, uh, this year. And the benefits were not only technical, but also economical. It led to quicker delivery and uh, considerable cost savings on implementation and maintenance of IT systems and their infrastructure. Uh, next, please. Already at that time, we, we started transitioning from app-centric to data-centric architecture. The ultimate goal of being data-centric was to design data models that precede the implementation of a given application and remains valid long after the application is gone. And with the knowledge management services, we partially uh, achieved it. However, you, you might wonder why partially. The main reason was that our services were dedicated to our internal users. Therefore, the data model was still too specific, limiting widespread reusability of our data. Next, please. Imagine we have already our data aggregated, enriched, structured in a machine readable and non proprietary format such as JSON. And technically, we could have transformed to this JSON to linked open data formats such as RDF to be compliant with a five star linked open data model. However, without taking into account semantic interoperability, our data would still be uh, less understandable and easily, uh, less easily exploitable by the users outside the European Parliament. I will not read the definition of a semantic interoperability, which you can see here on the right. Instead, I will tell you how did we achieve it. Next, please. Semantic interoperability can only happen through the principle of reusability. 
which is about not constantly reinventing the wheel, but instead reusing the existing ontologies and control vocabularies to build your own data models. Here you can see a non-exhaustive list of well-known EU and W3C ontologies that have been selected and is currently used by the European Parliament. Obviously, LE and LEDL are the key ontologies. Also, in this context, we have been collaborating with the Publication Office to enrich some of the EU authority tables uh, that is also crucial to guarantee a semantic interoperability. Therefore, it should not be neglected. Uh, while for describing, um, um, sorry, for describing our legislative and non-legislative activities and documents, which Christy will present you in a few minutes, we created. Um, we, we decided to use the LE and the LEDL. Uh, ontologies, sorry, we created a LEP application profile formalized uh, uh, with Shackle. And uh, first, uh, the uh, LE, LE and LEDL was not, uh, it did not cover all our needs. So for that purpose, we became a member of LE task force for proposing some uh, changes. For example, I think Thomas mentioned that uh, uh, non uh, it was extended for non-legislative uh, data and, uh, to describe data and activities uh, for our purpose. Uh, next, please. So, as I said, we, uh, for describing legislative and non-legislative data and documents, uh, we created a LEP application profile and uh, we reused the other ontologies, which I showed you just before. Um, we also reused the ontologies for describing some general metadata, for example, creator of a document or a city in which meeting will take place. However, like every organization, we also have some particular needs for describing more technical or specific metadata. And for that purpose, we have created a limited number of custom properties and classes in a small ontology such as uh, so-called EPVOC. On top of that, we built a dedicated data model uh, for describing the organization of a European Parliament, uh, so-called ORGP, also formalized uh, with Shackle. Next, please. And here you can see some numbers concerning our first release uh, expecting to go live uh, very soon. Uh, and uh, we will go live with almost uh, 200 uh, data sets. 11 of them will consist of uh, EP organization data, such members and corporate bodies, starting from the beginning of the European Parliament existence. The rest will consist of plenary activities and documents covering data from 2014. And in total, we already have around 35 million of triples. And we expect to grow uh, up to 500 million triples in a year or two. And now I give a floor to Christy, who will present you how we use the Lee and the LDL for our use cases. So, hello, I'm Christy. So, um... Sorry, I will try to present a bit uh, the business side of the cases. So, uh, just to make it very, very simplified, um, the <laughs> Parliament and the Act as a co legislator and share with the Council the power to adopt and amend legislative proposals. They propose new legislation or so, and they decide on the EU budget. The report and the motions. Um, that are tabled by members or political groups or parliamentary committees that are put to vote in plenary sittings with or without debate. And the members can change the submitted text uh, by drafting and adopting amendments. 
And after the vote, the final text as adopted are published and forwarded to concerned authority and bodies. Of course, this is very, very uh, simplified story because it's much more complex in reality. I can show here a, a small um, glimpse of what a legislative procedure would look like in our observatory, oh, um, sorry, legislative observatory. As you can find on the Europol website. So, <clears throat> this is all we modeled um, the, the whole story behind the scene, mainly using Ellie and Ellie Dale ontologies to describe the whole process. Um, the red box on the top is a procedure. It consists of many activities that you can see in blue, and some are triggered by other institutions. Uh, like European Commission, European Council, national parliaments. Some helps are linked to EP stages of work, uh, parliamentary committees or plenary stages mainly. Some activities may also have related documents that you would see um, in the orange boxes and they are linked to um, in between each other with different type of relationship because it could happen before the event, after the event, such things. In the end, we have complete um, EP knowledge graph that links everything, the procedure, the activities, the meeting, the vote, document, the MEPs and the corporate bodies. Then I would present a couple of uh, examples. Uh, here we have represented a, a short summary of an adoptive text. So during the current parliamentary term, EP adopt position on a specific topic. It is described with the Eurovoc descriptors. Um, these are uh, existing in multiple Yahoo language and in different IT format. All these are represented by different boxes on the uh, little schema you have on the right. And then uh, this adopted text was also corrected by two corrigendum. One of them was consolidated in the adopted text. This is a kind of uh, extra information we could also make um, visible and provide through the LEDL as it stands for the time being. Another example with a document is a report. So. We have a rule of procedures, uh, which is called Rule 58. This one makes that the report can be tabled in the plenary on a proposal from a rapporteur. And the committee responsible table is an amendment for consideration in plenary. All this would be voted um, during the plenary uh, stage. And this is what is represented here on the little extract. Another example again is about an um, event here about meetings. So parliament meets monthly in part session meetings. Those part sessions are divided on one day sittings, divided in several parts themselves, taking place in specific location. We have an agenda for each of the part session and each of the sittings with forcing point to be documented. And all the details of the meeting are recorded after that in the plenary session document where the forcing points are reused but as real points. So uh, this is what we shown here on the small extract. One else and last uh, example would be about the plenary session document. As I just said, the uh, minutes of the sittings are giving the detail of the exact proceeding. But then we reuse the forcing point of the agenda as to link with what really happened. Uh, the same with the version of the different uh, vote and the attendance list. So that was for the Parliament. Okay, thank you, thank you very, very much to all the speakers for these fascinating presentations. I think it gives a very clear view on Eli and Eli-DL and uh, its, its technical layers. Also on the ontology, the data model that is behind as a backbone, but at the same time also at the challenges you have been uh, facing and uh, the interoperability and coordination 
that is needed to reach the, such such results uh, like for instance uh, in particular the the use case of spain has shown also thank you very much for sticking to the timing i think uh, you had to be very brief uh, on on certain levels in your presentations but very good we have um a couple well quite some animation in the chat uh several questions have already been uh, replied to but i propose i just start from the beginning in order to ensure that we have covered everything all the answers meanwhile if you have new questions please don't hesitate you can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand if you want to pose questions immediately so i will start with the first one it was from cecile on the uh, did you consider any foundational ontology to describe activities I've been looking at the chat. I see, have seen lots of replies already from the pre, from the presenters, speakers. Uh, Cecil, uh, has your question been correctly? Yes, 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 yes. It was answered. So thank you, Jean. I think it was Jean who answered yes. Okay, perfect, excellent. Thank you. Um, there was a question from Magnus on the the slides and the download. Well, um, you know the, the the meeting or the event is being recorded, so we will uh, we will publish the recordings and also. Uh, the presentations afterwards on the site. So this was also in the chat, the, the exact link to the endorse follow up event pages. Uh, and then there was a note from from Magnus uh, on the model in other areas, uh, but you spend time on wiki data and do things like this it would be interesting if some to have some parliament data in Europe in five stars. Uh, in Sweden, you have four star data that anybody wants to comment on that or Magnus I can I can comment on it. Uh, what we we have we have excellent data in Sweden since nine, 2010, but it's four star, and they are mentally blind on connecting to other areas, and that's sad because everything starts with blows or or in the parliament. So I think we need to open it up, and I need good examples, and I spend time with Wikidata, but Wikidata is just a playground <laughs> for for people like me. So we need to have some governments showing this is the possibility. And I like what I've seen from Spain. So if you have things in English, my Spain is not good. So <laughs> thanks. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Magnus. I don't know if one of somebody of the speakers wants to comment on this. You have Magnus. We we came with the task force to the Swedish official journal. I think uh, two or three years ago to to present Eli. Then you have a lot of documentation about Eli uh, that is available in English. Um, and also the task force is always there to help. So if you have any question or any, or if you need a workshop in Sweden, uh, I guess the task force will organize that. So just send an email to, to John Dan or to Willem. Yeah. Thanks. I'm just an aggressive Wikipedian <laughs> who would like to see things and, and we don't see people don't understand persistent identifiers. We are really unmature. We produce data as text. So everything that helps, I can send you a ping. And if you have something, please let me know. Thanks. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> as Sean said, there's a lot of information already available in English, uh, so you could find it there. I think I'm um, looking at Eli data dot yes, the, the link is in the in the chat for Spain. It's also in English. It can help. Um, <clears throat> I know the official journal of Sweden is uh, we, even if we had an, an, a, 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 a working discussion with them, uh, I think they're not moving on into implementing uh, mm. something something newer so maybe you could convince the parliament to move on and uh, uh, go go on the other side <laughs> maybe that could work who knows uh, i try i do i do shadow backlogs what they should do from the parliament data because uh, we, they don't refer anything and what is interesting is that we have historical parliament data they are using something called TEI Parla. And there you say that this person, same as Wikidata, is speaking and so on. Mm -hmm. But that's the university people. So reality is not there. Sorry. Yeah. But I think you have also next example is European Parliament, I think, which has a very complex uh, procedure. So uh, if uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my friends from European Parliament. So I always say, if they can do it, everybody can do it. Uh, 
Okay, thank you. Uh, there was another question from Cecile. Uh, how do you envisage relationships between Eli and AKN? Mm. Yes, so that was answered as well as yes. um, having so that I should uh, ask the, the Swiss uh, representative who did something about that. Mm. I, I would be interested because I think it can also support anyone going to uh, use uh, Leos, for instance, so um, either to to enrich uh, um, a Leos, so um, a document structured using AKN with ALI metadata or the other way around uh, by starting a document uh, using uh, AKN to automatically provide uh, uh, ELI metadata. Yeah. Um, Thomas, I was wondering if we had an official document on that or something that has been done by, uh, because we did, Switzerland did it, I guess mm -hmm. we could get the info, that for the use case, but I don't remember if we have something more. Yeah. I remember we did something a few years ago, but I have to yeah. dig it up, but probably we, we might have a, a document somewhere. Yeah. I, I, will, I will look for it. But uh, and what you describe as yeah. is exactly what is done, uh, uh, for example, in, Switz in uh, Luxembourg and Switzerland, it's both uh, Data coming from the XML of a uh, comment so that goes to the, the to the yeah. knowledge graph. And the other side, if you have because in fact you have a lot of metadata in the knowledge graph, so they can be reproduced inside the XML to 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 provide information inside the XML. So it's uh, both ways. Exactly what how you described it. Yeah. yeah. So I think it it serves the um, you know the. Is DEP funding because uh, DEP is funding both AKN for EU and uh, ELI. And I think to, when you have a consistent story about them, then it, it, it supports. Uh... Mm -hmm. It, it it supports better the the whole um no no it's it's what is done um yeah it's what i think it's also the next steps for 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 the parliament um. okay thank you very much so if you can if you can uh, then share this resource if you find it or share the contact it will be great yeah i will look for with switzerland and tomac and look if we can find uh, something else thank you Thank you. There was another question from you, Cecil, on uh, the unique number governed in Luxembourg and also on the uh, confidentiality requirements. But I think it has all been answered in the in the chat. Uh, correct? Well, maybe not fully, because okay. for the unique number, in fact, I my question was really regarding this um, sequence number, and I was wondering how it could happen if you have several administrations, or whether it's per administration that you have a unique number. So it was more related to that is governance of of how the numbering is 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 dealt with. But I don't know the legal system in in uh, Luxembourg. But for instance, in Spain, it, would it work in the same way? So it was this type of of, of you you understand my question? This was not really regarding the ELI uh, unique persistent identifier, but inside this you, the unique number that is used inside the. Um, the, the the unique identifier and whether there were some uh, organizational measures to ensure this uniqueness at state level yeah and uh, maybe i can just reply as i said our uh, our identifier is not the number at the end it's the full uri that's the identifier so that's already a, a difference so you have really the legal looks dot public dot you ba 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 till a472 Slash CEO. So that's the full identifier. And the number at the end, the A is a series A or B. We have two series. And it's just during publication, it will take the next number which is available and then it will be will be published. So it's really the official journal who decides, well, who doesn't decide actually because it's it's incremental, um, uh, it will give the number at, at the end. Whatever publication is, whatever ministry it it, it, it is. And then I, I can maybe I can answer also for Spain, but uh, Maria under your control. Uh, as for them also, it's the full URI, which is the 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 the, the reference. Uh, you could have an A, or you could have a four seven two in uh, in 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 uh, the in the Boe in the federal one, and a four seven two also maybe in the Catalonia one, because it's a full URI, which is which is important. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's the point. The ELI offers us different components, and the point is choose 
all of them than help to identify this uh, this document, you know. And sometimes the, maybe the one component is duplicate, but it is the full URI that makes uh, this the identifier. So I won't find uh, the same resource with the same, in our case, jurisdiction, range, uh, date, uh, number, and so on. So, um, yeah, in, in your case, you, you, you should uh, find w w um, the, w with uh, what uh, components uh, can help to um, develop this uh, identifier, not just the current number or whatever. Okay, Cecil, does this? Yes, yes. Cover everything you. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Thanks. Thank, thank you. There's another question from Magnus. Any activity to connect different countries' documents? Um, there was also well, there were a few answers to that. Magnus, is your uh, question completely answered? I think that's it? that's okay. I think it's a lifelong okay. project. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, perfect. Then there was an. Okay, you you had a similar question on the Spain e live work, but you had a reference, the exact reference to the, the Spain example. Yes, thanks. Start reading. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then there was a question from, Padua. Is there any support within this knowledge network for those of us in the commercial side of identifier usage? Yeah, I, I was answering him writing, but uh, I think the, the all this open data has been done for inter, inst, institutional exchange, but also for the commercial companies or for non-governmental organizations. Uh, so I guess we will give support from the task force if needed, if he needs some information. Also, I was saying that uh, the European Parliament is doing a beta test phase now, and so it's open to the company who wants to, to be in this beta test. And so they can test the data set and get support if they need. Uh, so, yes, uh, it's quite important that all this work can be reused in, uh, by commercial and non commercial companies. Okay, thank you, Jean. There's also the, the reply um, with the link or the addition to LinkedIn so you can communicate further uh, through different channels on, on this, in this aspect. This brings me to the end of the question in the chat, at least. Uh, oh, no, there is a new one from Magnus. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any? I can, I can say it. Oh, yeah. This afternoon, I have a meeting with the Swedish government people, and they don't understand knowledge graphs. And we, I will try to move them in that direction. Any project pages or any lesson learned would be excellent. You can, I, I put my email address in here. John, we have to do a workshop in Sweden. <laughs> but you, you need, we need to have some. Oh, we did one. one. I don't know who went over we there. Do but a new did a bad one. job. The wow. guy did a bad job. Who went over there? No, it was great. It was Maria. It was very <laughs> but Sweden, it's it's not one person. It's it's chaos. We have a new government since yesterday, so maybe. <laughs> um, you have quite a lot of information on Eli uh, at itself, the, the usage of uh, of URIs, permanent URIs, etc. I just pasted the, the link and you have some uh, simple videos explaining. You have some uh, documentation, um, uh, the leaflet, etc. That could help at least. Some are for managers and some are for technical guys. So I would stick with the management one. Uh, the last thing from my reflection, I'm working with uh, doing things with Wikidata and some people there are excellent and some people are just Wikipedian. I think we need to have some kind of skill matrix. What skills do you need to do good knowledge graphs, to do things like that? For, the thing is that in Sweden, we don't get the right team producing things I see from the government people. We have 290 municipals and so on. And and they don't understand how difficult things are. That we need to start speak to each other, communication and so on. That's small reflection from someone outside. 
I think a good idea, just take him to, to lunch, have a beer, and that might work because <laughs> you don't need technical experts to do it completely. It, you, you need, of course, yes, you need uh, a Jean and Thomas, it would be, would be great to have in, in, in their team, but they can only be as a support also. Uh, and uh, uh, it's the political side who has to decide to move on to, to, move on to that direction. If they don't give the go, uh, they will not do it. So, do they have the vision? Do they have uh, the, the knowledge not needed, but do they have the vision to do it? All the countries are moving into this direction. You have a PSI directory since many years now, who almost forces you to move on into providing your data uh, in a way that it can be reused. So, does it help? In Sweden, doesn't look like it. There's a hand to raise in here. Yes, uh, can I make a point? So I, I would like, to, I mean, just a bit of advertisement for our so endeavor in the um, uh, interoperability unit of Digit, uh, who is uh, funding the ELI, by the way. So we understood this problem of uh, skills. So, so the thing is that. Um, the one who take decisions and the, the lawyers, they need to understand just what is not a lot, not everything, but they need to have a, an understanding of, of um, also of semantic of the, they need to have a data literacy, a little bit of data literacy. And the more you, it will grow to more um, so to, to supported solutions, they need to understand where to go. So we, we started building a, a learning path for policy makers. And I just put in the chat uh, what it is now, but it, it, will in, it will increase. So you can also, I don't know, Magnus, but if maybe it's too early to help you, but at least um, here it is and it will be, we, we put a lot of emphasis on, on this. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Yeah, indeed, Magnus, on the on the chat, there are some very interesting links uh, which can help you further on this. I don't see additional questions coming in on the chat, but I see Aniko. Aniko, you raise your hand, so please. Yes. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I just wanted to reflect a little bit on the Spanish presentation of Maria, and thank you very much. And uh, I have browsed a little bit the website that you posted in the chat, and uh, I wanted to ask you if you have foreseen the alignment of your controlled vocabularies uh, with some EU authority tables. Because, for example, also the, in the publications office, we are publishing an authority table on languages, uh, and I think we could also find some links with other uh, legal tables. So, have you foreseen the linking and the alignment with other resources in the controlled vocabularies? Uh, well, actually not, but it's a very good initiative and I, will, I, I take note, uh, yeah, to go this stair further and, yeah, interlink this difference control color, of course. So, thank you. Thank you. You have the example of the parliament because the for the parliament, they, they didn't create any new control vocabulary. They only used the control vocabulary published by the publication office. It was also easier because it's the same level, you know, it's, it's different for a country because a lot of uh, like the type of documents are different, you know, the type of legislation, the events are different. So it's quite more complex at the national, between national level and European level. You know. Okay, thank you, John. I do not see. Oh, is the question from Teresa, or is it just a, a very, very big thank you to all the presentations? So, I can only confirm. Thank you for all the hard work and the very useful presentations. I don't know, Teresa, if you want to comment on it or if you're okay. Well, I don't know if you understand. I mean, I'm I'm at home now. I'm a translator. Uh, I just wanted to say, as a user, that we really, you know, we are really thankful for your efforts, and we really use the identifiers <clears throat> uh, 
just from a translator point of view, from a linguist point of view. Sorry, I cannot show my image. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say that even if we don't understand all the insights because we only work as users with documents, uh, we really appreciate you, the work you do to classify and to document all the process, especially, you know, in the, in the process of legal, you know, doing legal documents, we are very interested at, at looking at the intermediate uh, documents in a process. And for example, in the parliament documents or the council ones, uh, these identifiers are very useful. So thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Teresa. I will uh, launch a last call for questions because I don't think in the chat there is anything left. Anybody wants to raise hand or launch a question, please do. No, not immediately. I will just jump in then since I have a raised hand, uh, but you haven't quite noticed it yet. <laughs> oh, do sorry. The floor? Do I have the floor for a few seconds? Yes, please. Thank you so much. This is uh, Remy Padouin from Norway. I work with commuter.com, private industry, and we are very interested in um, the standardization and uh, European, Europeanization of uh, legal identifiers because we use them when we create the data sets that, base, uh, that make the basis for uh, legal, legal requirements in order to comply to GRC, governance, risk, and compliance uh, in all uh, areas, um, but of course, uh, specifically within uh, um, uh, health, uh, environmental, and uh, security, as well as IT. Um, so I'm so happy to have had this uh, chance to uh, to make contact uh, with some people. I will be uh, mailing uh, Jean very soon, and uh, then I just wanted to finally notice uh, note that um, I heard uh, John from Luxembourg uh, briefly mention that uh, it's almost time for lunch and uh, we should have a beer. And uh, I got so excited about that uh, lunch beer until I realized that, no, I live and work in the Puritan, Norway, and uh, we cannot drink during work hours. So uh, you yeah. guys do that for me, please. Thank you. <laughs> I will then too then, okay. <laughs> but I will wait till Saturday then this time. <laughs> um, you, sh you I guess you, you you know your official journal uh, love that love data, love data. Yeah. Okay. They are very. They have all the knowledge also about about Eli. They they've been in contact uh, with us. They've been on the team since since the beginning. So uh, do not hesitate to, to 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 contact also directly them over there. They they are they are also pretty good. Uh, Okay, pretty good is good enough. Thank you. <laughs> Thank I'm you. also looking at, is there another question, another raised hand we didn't see? I don't see for the moment. I don't know if there is um, some people we missed out in the questions in the chat or in the raising of the hands. Please do. Can I can I have a last question? So um, just maybe it's not for this uh, for this uh, time, but in fact, you you are planning you have new projects and to increment uh, ELI DL and mostly and maybe ELI as well. And um, it was not clear. So now in this uh, in this presentation, it was more about what you have achieved, and it's very very uh, interesting. Uh, but I, I was uh, interested in understanding really uh, where you want to go, and it was not clear. So I, I'm not sure whether I should liaise with um, with whom I should talk on this. John. John. John? Okay. Could be with me. It could be John. with internally with the OP. So what whatever is easier for you, for you. If you're in Luxembourg, it could be very easy to to meet uh, in, within okay. the event. Yeah. I think the next step is because the, the step here was really to put the infrastructure and to convince most of the countries to implement it. Now, then all the projects we have are more how to use it, you know, how to use it to exchange information between institutions, how to make a search engine that will uh, go over all national legislation. So, so I think the next steps are probably the usage of what we did because. Uh, 
for now it's mostly the infrastructure thank you thank you okay thank you the last note in the chat is from Agatha uh, to thank you again for the great presentations and the very valuable thoughts and remarks. Hmm. If there is no other comment maybe left. Stefan, if, yes? if I can maybe just say a last word, uh, it's more also a thank you to, to, to all the member states, to all the people, all the staff. Uh, to the Office of Publication, would, who have also believed in, in this project since, since the beginning. And uh, also our newcomers, European Parliament also for, for DL. Uh, I think it has been, it has shown that together we really can do something and something incredible. If we look uh, at the map again, how many countries have implemented already the ELI part and hopefully the Eli DL part will also come on and how we can re 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 revolutionize uh, this uh, legal data. I think it is impressive. But again, it's not a one man show. It's not a two man show. It's really a multiple multicultural uh, show over, over time. So um, again, thanks to all of those who have uh, started, who are thinking about it. Uh, without you, it uh, would, have, would have not been possible. Thank you. Okay, thank, many thanks, John. I think uh, with this, we can almost close the, the indoors follow-up event and uh, also stop the recording right away. But before closing, a big, big thank you to all our speakers of the day. Uh, John, John, Maria, uh, Thomas, Christy, and Laura. Uh, I think uh, your presentations on Eli in the L showed that are, have shown as a wonderful example of how legal information can be exchanged and reused optimally uh, EU and member states wide. So thanks a lot for all the efforts you have put on, on all this. And also thank uh, all the participants of this event for your remarks and the lively uh, communication in the chat. So uh, presentation, like I said, presentations and recording it will be published soon. So you can come back for later reuse or exchange. Please don't hesitate. And please don't hesitate to contact us also on the Endorse site. So we put the link in the chat. You can find there all the information. You can contact us through the functional mailbox if you want um, on the follow up events. Please also join us on the Endorse join up pages and the exchange platform. And final note of publicity, if I may uh, note that Endorse, uh, there will be a new um, a main conference done in March 2023. So we we will, uh, you may find already the timeline online. So we have a dedicated uh, page to that. It will be a pleasure having you all joining, participating to next year's conference of Endorse. If you have any questions or contributions related to this main, main conference, please don't hesitate to come back to us and you can find it on the publications office Endorse website. So with this, I wish you all a pleasant day. We'll stay in touch. Thank you very much. And once more, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye to all.